Hello, GetFPV Learn community. I'm Derek, and I'm going to be your host as we explore all the ins and outs of Betaflight. Within the previous videos in this series, we talked about how to download and install the Betaflight configurator. We also talked about how to download and install the two main drivers you're going to need in order to be able to connect your flight controller to the computer. Well, guess what? Today, we're ready to connect our flight controller to the computer and to Betaflight for the very first time. There's a few things that we need to be aware of when we do connect the flight controller. So we're going to check that out. I'm going to show you what to look for. And we're almost ready to start configuring our flight controller. Before we actually get the flight controller connected to the computer, let's talk a little bit about exactly what it is we're after right now. When we plug this thing in, well, we're going to have to talk to it. We're going to have to talk to the flight controller in order to set it up, configure it, tell it what we want it to do. However, there is a setting or a COM port that we need to be able to find in order to establish the connection. A COM port is nothing more than a serial port. You could think of it as being similar to a USB or even a UART on your flight controller. In fact, every single computer back in the day used to have that serial connection on the back, and that is also a COM port. We don't really see them anymore. It's been replaced by newer technology, but it doesn't mean that we've stopped using that particular type of interface. And that's what we're using here today. So when we plug in our quadcopter, we need to look for the COM port that is going to be generated when we make that connection. With all that said, let's jump on over to the computer and I'll show you what to look for. The first tool that we're going to utilize in order to figure out our COM port is Device Manager. This is a little bit more of an advanced method. It can be used to install drivers, but in this case we're going to use it to help us figure out our COM port. You can find Device Manager by just simply typing in Device Manager into your search box within Windows. This method is going to work for Windows 7, 8, 10, and I bet you even Windows 11 when it finally comes out. So again, go to your search, just type in Device Manager, and this is what you're going to get. Once you have Device Manager open, this is what we're looking for, ports, COM, and LPT. If I expand this, we're going to see the different ports that are attached to the computer. Now the flight controller is going to create a virtual port, that's why we don't see anything here. And I do have a couple of connections in here now because I do have some other devices connected to the computer. A great example of a virtually generated COM port is one right here from my 3D printer. I just know what this is. I mean, it's pretty clear. It says it, 3D printer by Rambo, COM6. I know exactly what that is. If you see a COM port 1, this is typically reserved for the computer. Usually it's an internal serial port. Even though the computer may not have a connection on the outside for this, a lot of them still have it internally. Uh, this LPT1, this is a printer port, an old school printer port. This is a very rare thing to see. You're probably not going to see it on a modern computer. But again, some boards may still have this. Uh, and I do have another COM port here. I have no idea what this is, COM port 3. Something I have attached to the computer. Um, but anyway, I'm going to use process of elimination with what I have here in order to figure out the COM port for the flight controller. But anyway, now that I've looked at this, I'm all set to go ahead and actually connect the quad to the computer. So I'm going to plug that flight controller in with my USB cable. Now here's a good tip when it comes to your USB cable. Make sure you use a high quality cable. The $2 cable that you got at the gas station is not going to cut it. I get messages, honest to God, on a weekly basis because people are using crummy USB cables. Use a high quality cable, make sure it supports data, and it is not only for charging. That is a big mistake I see people making, so you need a data cable. High quality USB, make sure it's for data. All right, let's plug this guy in. Now when I plug this in, you're going to hear the computer ding, and that's a good indicator as to whether or not you actually have a good cable, and the computer is recognizing the flight controller. So when I plug this in, you're going to hear Windows go ba ding and that's exactly what we're after. That means we've connected a USB device. Upon inserting the cable and hearing that ding in Windows, you'll see here within Device Manager, I now have a new COM port available. In this case, it's COM port 11. And look at, remember this, we installed this driver not too long ago. 
the CP210X USB to UR driver. Remember that in the last video? So here we go. This is actually the COM port for our flight controller, COM port 11. Again, I'm just going to reemphasize this. We figured this out by process of elimination. I know what all the other devices were, and when I unplug, you're going to see COM port 11 go away. When I plug back in, you're going to see COM port 11 pop right back in there. That's how I can confirm that this is my flight controller. One thing worth noting, if it is the absolute first time you've connected your flight controller, it could take Windows a moment to recognize it and install the proper drivers for it. Even though we installed those driver packages in the previous video, it is still going to take Windows a moment to configure that flight controller the very first time you connect it. So don't be worried if you plug it in and it's not instantaneous. Give it a few seconds. Windows is probably going to pop up a message and telling you it's installing a driver, and it should also confirm when that installation has been successful. Okay, got it? This is how we search for our COM port. Let's move on over to Betaflight. With our Betaflight window open, in the top right, you're going to see when we click on this particular box that it's going to show us our COM ports that we have available. And this should look really familiar from what we saw in the device manager. Actually, it is exactly what we saw in the device manager. So here's all my ports. Well, right now I don't have COM port 11 for the flight controller. So let's plug it in. And remember, I'm listening for that ding when I plug in the cable. But ding. And look at this. Beta flight pops up with COM port 11. Now I am ready to click that connect button for the very first time. Look at that, beta flight does its dance. I get my status and we have successfully loaded the configuration for the flight controller. Give yourself a big round of applause. You have just successfully connected your flight controller to the computer for the first time. This was really one of our first major steps in being successful while working with beta flight. I think that's all I got for this one. Be sure to check out the next video where we're gonna back up the configuration within Betaflight. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.